Get ready for record inflation in 2022, my friends. Record inflation. Now, I don't know if it'll be explicit inflation record, but man, it's going to be barn burning. It's going to be ugly. And, uh, and there's one culprit. Of course, everyone will not blame that one culprit because for some reason, people have sold their souls on the idea of what causes inflation. And it's just, it's, it's, it's one of the most frustrating things of my career is trying to, because I fell for it too. And then when I recognized how idiotic that was, once the evidence was placed right in front of me, I could not deny it anymore. I said, oh yeah, that's not true. This is true in here instead. But I don't understand it. All right, so it's it's just it's frustrating. It didn't have to be like this, man. And uh, and here we are. But Josh, you always said deflation. Yeah, completely. Demographics, spending, the amount of debt is all deflationary. But at the end of the day, one thing and one thing only drives inflation. And that one thing, if it's not dealt with accordingly, um, and we we pretend like we don't have to, it doesn't exist the way we need it then there's going to be massive inflation. All right, so let's just dive into this. So first and foremost, too many to count factors driving fertilizer prices higher and higher. So we're going to start here, and then I'm going to show you how I came across it. So this is from uh, fb.org, Mark, Market Intel, fb.org. I don't know what FB stands for, but anyway. Among farmers and ranchers, very few topics are being discussed as much as a sky-rising cost of fertilizer and increasing concerns regarding availability. All right, so we're going to come here first because this is important right here. All right, this is from a farmer who posted this on Facebook. This bay of fertilizer with a cost being around 18000 last year. Today we put it in for just over 40000 A total of Roundup, 275 gallons, last year cost 4900 bucks, and saves over 14000 This is just two of the inputs for growing a crop. This is not a political statement, so don't take it as such. This is real, real world prices farmers are having to deal with. All right, so let's, uh, and we're going to go to this article right here. Compared to September 2020 prices, ammonia has increased 210%. Liquid nitrogen has increased over 159%. Urea is up 155%. And MAP has increased 125%. While DAP is up over 100 and potash has risen above 134. So you might be familiar with fertilizer NPK. Nitrogen, potassium, and uh, phosphorus. Well, potash, potash and potassium are basically the same thing. All right, so you just might be familiar with that. You're 13, 13, 13. You used to be able to get 16, 16, 16. Even here in Georgia, you can't anymore. I don't even know if you get 13, 13, 13. That has gone up through the roof, but there's more to just uh, fertilizer than that. All right. Unfortunately, this, the fertilizer sticker price, farmers in some areas are reporting is up more than 300%. And delivery times are anyone's guess. We've seen this before in 2008. During the 12 months that ended on April 2008, nitrogen prices increased 32%. Phosphate and potash increased almost 100% each. Well, that was in 2008. Now we're up almost 300%. Uh, let's see. Prices remained there through 2009, then dropped, ultimately returning to pre-2007 spending uh, levels. That price surge was associated with strong domestic and global demand, low fertilizer inventories, uh, and the inability of U.S. fertilizer industry to adjust production levels. This time around, those factors are at play a lot with a lot of other ones as well. All major nutrients used in the production of primary row crops in the U.S., nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and PK, have experienced varying degrees of us upward price pressure. September, we already talked about this, as compared to September of last year, ammonium, Liquid nitrogen up over 200%, 159% respectively. Cost for fertilizer as farm production input since 2008. So here, this right here, it looks like the average is about, right about 100 or so. And in 2008, the average is about 75% above, um, the prices were 75% above average. And then you go to 2021, it's 118% above average. That's on ammonia. This right here is on liquid nitrogen, 84%. Cost of fertilizers, farm production, right here, 101% above, 60% above. And this is freaking nuts, man. Oh, by the way, was government not spending much over these times? Was government, was there not drunken sailors in charge of the federal government? Was a debt not going higher and tr tr uh, trillion dollar deficits? And yet, look at that, prices went down. <coughs> Why? 
Well, because uh, inflation is not based on government spending, it's based on freaking energy costs. All right, so what we're going to do is, so what is causing all this? We're just going to go here, we're going to go to gas. Energy and other variable costs are rising. All right. To make fertilizer, along with globally priced raw materials, production facilities require a large amount of energy to convert the raw material chemicals into the applicable farm use. <coughs> For example, ammonia is produced by the Haber-Bosch process in which nitrogen is combined with hydrogen to synthesize the ammonia, using natural gas as a source of hydrogen as well as the energy for synthesizing it. Since natural gas is the primary building block for most nitrogen fertilizers, it takes about 33 million metric British thermal units per material ton of ammonia to make the conversion. This accounts, uh, uh, let's see, this accounts for 70 to 90 percent of the production variable costs in the synthesis, synthesis, synthesis process. Natural gas prices have risen dramatically over the past few months, especially in Europe, where they have increased over 300% since March of 2021, which have also forced many EU nitrogen plants to close. Oh, let's go look at here. What do we see here? Fertilizer shortage will send food pricing shortage up, flying up. Why? Farmers pacing sky high. This is from the, the I guess, the Financial Times. I'm not sure. The Times of London. Times of UK. So UK Times. All right. Uh, natural, record natural gas prices force fertilizer manufacturers to halt production. Farmers face paying sky high prices for fertilizer and may struggle to secure supplies at all, raising the prospect for weak crop yields that will affect food supplies. A second major fertilizer producer, Yara, announced as curtailing production because of record high natural gas prices in Europe. Uh, the Norwegian group said 40% of its European ammonia will be curtailed by next week. So, not, so normally when the prices sky up, you freaking produce more because you get higher profits. No, 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 not happening now. Not happening now. Oh, by the way, what's Germany doing? Oh, just real quick, we'll come back to Germany. Uh, Green, uh, Green Britain faces food shortages of energy crisis shutdowns factories. As energy prices in Europe go through the roof, factories are beginning to shut down and food is disappearing from the shelves uh, because of factory closures hit production. Um, acute food shortages were feared last night after high gas prices forced most of British commercial production of carbon dioxide to shut down. Carbon dioxide is what? Oh, it's a fertilizer. It's not the evil thing the idiots on the freaking globalist agenda of the left would say. Carbon dioxide is a fertilizer. Plants need it to grow. Uh, emergency talks are being held between government officials and food producers. Um, with energy warnings, a black swan event is an extremely rare blow with unpredictable consequences. Yeah. The closure of two fertilizer plants in Northern England and Europe and others in Europe have left food and drink industry facing a shortage of carbon dioxide, which is a byproduct of chemical man of uh, fertilizer manufacturing. All right. So hang tight. Here we go. Germany to shut down all remaining nuclear plants, forcing reliance on fossil fuels. So by the end of next year, Germany is going to shut down all of its remaining nuclear plants by the end of 2022. For the energy industry in uh, Germany, uh, the nuclear phase out is final. I mean, are these people, was it sadists or masochists where you like to hurt yourself? This is the weirdest thing. Three of the nuclear reactors will be shut down Friday, while the remaining three will be closed in a year. The German government accelerated its phase down of nuclear energy after Fukushima meltdown in uh, Japan in 2011. I, how many people died from Fukushima? Huh? I mean, it's a freaking insane. Um, uh, let's see. Schultz stopped short of explicitly labeling nuclear a renewable energy source. Well, it's not renewable, but it's uh, emission free. Uh, that's freaking nuts. All right, so we're not done yet because I want to show you something. The International Energy Administration reports in 2018 that about 14% of the world's oil and 8% of the world's natural gas are used as feedstocks for producing petrochemicals. The petrochemical industry produces thousands of products we use every day. They include plastics, da -da 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 -da, fertilizer, clothing, electronic devices, medical equipment, medicine, tires, solar panels, wind turbine blades, batteries, insulation. The, the report points out that demand growth for plastics and fertilizer are outpacing the demand growth for, growth for steel, aluminum, and cement. 
Petrochemical product demand has nearly doubled since 20, 2000, and the, and the U.S. and Europe use 20 times as much plastic and 10 times as much fertilizer as India, Indonesia, and other developing countries on a per capita basis. This means an explosion in growth will not abate anytime soon. And here you go. There's the plastics right there. Look at that. Through the roof. And here's the GDP. Way down here. Right, what is that GDP? Is that's kind of like a green right there. And here's the plastics. Exploding demand for plastics. And GDP is not keeping up with it. And so what happens? Well, if the price of natural gas is through the roof, and 14% uh, of the world's oil and 8% of the world's natural gas, and the price of oil is through the roof, is used for producing petrochemicals and we use petrochemical industry for thousands of products we use every day to include fertilizer what does that mean it means inflation man it has nothing to do with government spending i just stop stop i, I just don't want it. if you say it's government spending i'm just gonna ban you i can't take it it's idiotic it's freaking idiotic the government has been spending like drunken sailors since basically vietnam we haven't had any inflation at all. Yeah, we had in the 70s. What, oh, what caused inflation in the 70s? The government spending? No. Are you saying the government did not have big deficits under Reagan? Yes, they did. Stop. You sound like a freaking idiot, man. I'm sorry. You sound idiotic. You sound like you're still build, You're still dealing with And I, I was listening to my man Anomaly talk the other day. I like Anomaly. But he's like debating, uh, what's his name? Sticks Hexhammer. And uh, you know, basically he's saying the government printing is causing inflation. I said, Anomaly, you just you know it's not. Because we were printing money before this, just two freaking years ago, before the COVID crap. And there wasn't any inflation to speak of. What is happening, of course, is that when energy goes up, everything revolves around energy. And if the price of energy goes up because of idiots, idiots in Germany and Europe, idiots in the United States, idiots up in Canada, it's inflationary, horrifically inflationary. Just like what happened in the 1970s. Why the hell do you think we went to coal to begin with, by the way? I, I have to say it's to unblue the face. It was clean coal back then. Why? Under Carter. Because we didn't have enough natural gas. There wasn't natural gas. We didn't have any. We are running out of natural gas. So he said, well, we better ramp up coal. We'll make it clean, but at least off coal. But it's, uh, we were running out of natural gas until George Mitchell came up with this thing called fracking. Hydraulic fracturing which opened up the whole thing for under Obama and Trump to have low cost, low inflation, because we had massive amounts of freaking, we could have that massive amounts of natural gas where before we could not get to. And on top of that, we had huge oil reserves that we could find the Permian Basin up there in uh, North Dakota, uh, Bacon, that we pr previously did not have access to. It's amazing. We got lucky. We got lucky. Because at the end of the day, Obama was not too keen on a freaking on oil and natural gas but he read he saw i mean look obama's not stupid he's a pragmatist man he's a lib but he's a pragmatist he said look man we we've got to get cheap goods if we get cheap goods people will be happy when, when goods go through the roof people won't be happy i mean what do you think did freaking carter in man come on it wasn't that the government wasn't hasn't been spending i mean i just I, this is the most frustrating thing because it's so easy the government uh, inflation is too many goods chasing too few, too much dollars chasing too few goods. Well, that's what Milton Friedman said. It doesn't mean it's true. Inflation is a higher cost of energy, the inputs that go into the goods that you buy. That's what causes inflation. I'm, and I should not have been so stuck. The idiots. I cannot believe what's happening in California, in Canada, in Germany, even in the United States. I can't believe it. I, 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 I'm, I such a I, I just, I thought we, this was solved and I obviously was not. I thought people were smarter than this to recognize that if you have increasing energy, you're going to have inflation. I thought even the Democrats could knew that because Obama was, was pragmatist enough to know. Oh, it's crazy. All right, let's keep going back. All right. Now you might say those crops do not seem like they are that important. Again, we're talking about corn. But corn represents 49% of the U.S. nutrient use, while wheat accounts for 11% and soybeans 10. This is another problem with monoculture freaking agriculture, man. You're just growing 50% of the freaking thing is corn. Corn, 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 monoculture. We, we know that corn and soy are resistant. Uh, they're GMOs, man. Very GMO. Friendly. I don't even know if you can buy any non-GMO corn seed anymore. I don't know. Unless it's a hot, not hybrid. What's the uh, 
old school stuff. I forgot what they call it. Anyway, not going to get a massive scale. That's for damn sure. So the corn goes and they use the cows. Right? All this is bad. It hurts the soil. It hurts your, your, your body. Your body is basically being loaded up on corn. Uh, you know, never mind high fructose corn syrup. Never mind all the freaking antibodies, uh, antibiotics that go on. I mean, just this, this, we're just eating nothing, but we're just gushing on corn, 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 corn. It's crazy. And this isn't any good. Anyway, so let's keep reading here. Um, so look at corn is 49% of U.S. nutrient use is corn, while wheat accounts for 11% and soy is another 10 Cumulatively, those three crops account for 70% of U.S. fertilizer consumption. Monoculture agriculture right there. Right there. One percent. Never mind all the vegetable oil. Hor horrible for it. We all know this. It's freaking horrible. It's deathly. Worse yet, both grain and protein are primary ingredients in pet foods. So pet, oh, right here. Uh, let's see. Uh, however, keep in mind that corn, wheat, and soybeans represent the baseline not only for grain production in the U.S., but they're also the primary feed products for proteins, chicken, pork, and beef. That's why you want grass-fed beef as opposed to corn-fed beef. Have you noticed a shortage of pet food on your shopping trips? When fertilizer prices go up that, that high in price, the end cost of the harvest goes up in price, along with the end price of everything that the harvest is used for. So now we get to the point of supply chain where these protein prices show up on the average consumer. Yep, so let's keep leading here. I just, this is, it's so freaking frustrating, man. Uh, all right, uh, let's see here, let's see. Oh, just check this, okay, right here. This restaurant menu is shared with the conservative treehouse today and reflects how the owners of this specific dining establishment are having to cope with the price of chicken from their wholesale supplier. This example shows just how rapidly and unpredictably the price increases are hitting the restaurant industry. Here's chicken wings right there. Traditional buffalo wings, market price. They don't even have a price on there because market price. The chicken wings currently funder, fall under market price, kind of like lobster and crabs. This is the fork side of the field of fork inflation, and chicken wing prices represent the outcome of a total supply chain under extreme inflationary pressure. Keep in mind that the farmer was sharing on Facebook about the price of fertilizer and weed killer are prices for the next harvest, not the one she has he is, she is already completed. The origin of the next harvest starts with the components of prices 100 and 150 percent higher than the previous harvest. Grain silos already loaded up for carrying high prices in the next several months as the product flows to the supply chain and is used in food production and the feed of current ancillary users, manufacturers, and protein providers. However, those prices on the previous cost of production. When those grain silos are needed to be refilled, the next inbound harvest will have even higher costs. When the current field inflation accumulates through the supply chain, the outcome will carry a price increase even higher than the current one. I bet there are a lot of restaurants visiting print shops to show menus right now. It's to order new menus right now. By the time we get to Super Bowl Sunday, the price of chicken wings is going to bring sticker shock to those who have not been prepared. If you wonder why there's such a massive push from the communists towards the plant-based proteins and even meat grown in labs, this outcome is part of the reason. The climate change agenda makes a traditional food supply skyrocket and price to unsustainable levels. The professional leftists have been using the Overton window to nudge people into accepting an entirely new diet. Same group pushing for tiny houses, 100%. I, it's coming, man. It's coming. I mean, I, again, I think you better load up on your freaking, your, your freeze-dry stuff now. I tell you, man, it's going to be, I, I got to order some myself. It's only going to get uglier. There's no way around it. We're not going to be George. There's no George Mitchell to rescue us this time. No, there's Biden is in office until 2025. There's no one to rescue. This is what they want, man. It's like the freaking, uh, you know, the stupid movie, uh, Katniss, whatever that was, Hunger Games. You got the elite and you got the rest of us. And we are the rest of us, man. Higher electricity, higher energy prices, higher food prices. It's going to be ugly. Be prepared. I will see you.